The madness has arrived and the NCAA tournament is right around the corner. Welcome to Conference Championship Week and the Superbook Sports Podcast. I'm Ron Kruk, joined by the guys behind the counter, Superbook Sports and career Vegas odds makers, Jay Cornegay and John Murray. Guys, we were all set to start talking some college hoops and what happens the NFL flexes its muscles and says, hold on, not so fast. Breaking news to start off the podcast today. After all the drama, well, guess what? Aaron Rodgers is going nowhere. He's staying with Green Bay, agreeing to a four-year, $200 million extension with the Packers, making him the highest paid player in NFL history. And then the Denver Broncos went out and got a quarterback per reports the Seattle Seahawks are trading Russell Wilson to Denver for several first round and second round draft picks pending upon him passing a physical and Wilson approving the trade. So guys, thoughts on these blockbuster moves and, and what are they doing to the future lines for all three of those teams? Well, Ron, when you woke up this morning, um, to a lot of this news with Rogers and and later on, you know, the blockbuster trade between the the Seahawks and the Broncos. But we we kind of figured that uh, Rogers was going to stay in Green Bay. I mean, that's what every, all the news was leaning to. Uh, we we had the Green Bay Packers at six and twelve to one um, for the conference and Super Bowl, and we had to adjust it to four and eight. And then after the Wilson breaking news, which he's leaving the conference, and again that really. I, I believe it's an unbalanced league right now between the AFC and, and the NFC. If you just talk about the quarterbacks, but then we had adjusted down a little bit uh, um, with the Packers going down from four to seven to two for the AFC and eight to one for the Super Bowl. Now down to seven to one, but wow. that Wilson news really shook things up. I mean, we expected the Roger news to, to uh, unfold, but the, I'll tell you the, the Wilson and you know, I'm a Bronco fan. So, uh, I've been defending Wilson for the last 45 minutes <laughs> as a lot of my friends have been taking shots There's about how he's washed up. You guys gave up a lot, which the Broncos did. Broncos gave up a lot, uh, but uh, they were one piece away of being a contending team, and this is it. Absolutely, and giving up a lot has worked out okay for the uh, Los Angeles Rams. John, give me your take. Who's the big winner in this situation? I think it's the Green Bay Packers. Uh, you know, Jay mentioned it. Not only do they keep Aaron Rodgers, they'll probably keep Devontae Adams. I read they were going to franchise tag Adams. And they get Russell Wilson shipped out of the conference. We know that Seattle probably wasn't really a contender for next season, but Wilson could have been traded to another team in the NFC and given the Packers another rival in the Great NFC. Point. Now Wilson's in the AFC with the players I think are the best in the league, Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Lamar Jackson. It seems like all the great young quarterbacks are over in the AFC. We don't really know what San Francisco has in Trey Lance. Right now in the NFC, it's really the defending champion Rams and, of course, Green Bay. And Green Bay plays in a much easier division than mm, those teams good do. Point. So Green Bay, again, looks like the path is there for them to be the number one seed in the NFC playoffs or, at the very least, be a high seed in the NFC playoffs. That hasn't worked out well for them the last few years. But, you know, we, we might have been talking about a very different Super Bowl if Green Bay could have just got a punt off last season and <laughs> yeah, beat the 49ers. All they had to do was get the punt away, and they would have been hosting the uh, NFC Championship game. That was brutal. I, yeah. I tell you, Ron, the, I mean, just looking at you know the, the shift of, uh, of the odds over the last 45 minutes, and you know, I'm glad you brought up that block punt, John. That just I'm sure Green I, Bay I was, fans are too. I, I actually Incredible. had a, a, a number of futures on the Packers uh, last year, but uh, that all – went down the drain with that that play but yeah. you know the broncos were adjusted from you asked about the odds and the ship the odds run the broncos were 15 and 30 this morning uh they're down to 7 and 14. uh wow. the seahawks the seahawks went in the opposite direction they were 20 to to uh, 20 to 1 to win the nfc and 40 to 1 to win the super bowl now they are bumped up to 100 to 1 for the conference and 200 to one to win the Super Bowl. So that really does incredible, you know, tell you how much a great quarterback means to a franchise. Yeah. And and that's a obviously one of the bigger adjustments we've ever seen. 
Yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll have to adjust that again because Seattle's getting Drew Locke. Adjust it which maybe way? Not. Maybe not. Well, Seattle, this could end up being good for Seattle. Let's keep in mind they got a lot of draft picks. Not in the yeah. not in the not in the near term. Yeah. The yeah. Seahawks are not going to be they're not going to be good this year, but obviously somebody in that organization decided they didn't want to pay Russell Wilson fifty million dollars a year. Absolutely. Whether they're right or not about that, we'll see. Because if Denver goes out and wins the Super Bowl, then of course they win the trade. That's but right. Seattle decides we don't want to pay this guy fifty a year. Let's get some draft picks and rebuild. They're there. in a very tough division. They probably weren't going to do much next year with Wilson in that division, yep. and they decided to hit reset. Hey, isn't there a basketball tournament starting up? Something going on? Maybe There's a little there. bit going on around here, yeah. A little bit, yeah, yeah. I hope uh, hope you guys got your sleeping bags and air mattresses, got that mini refrigerator stocked up in the office because I don't think you guys are leaving the Westgate till – probably about mid-April. I hope you two are ready for some March Madness and the crazy scene that always takes place there at the Super Book. All right, today we look ahead uh, to the conference final, or the conference tournament starting this week, and we'll give you a little tease to the big dance coming up next week. You know, guys, we've seen a lot of changes in the rankings this year. Uh, you know, several top teams losing. It's an extremely deep field this year, and I'm sure the madness of this year's tournament is going to take crazy up a notch. Today, we're going to focus in on the Power Five conferences check out the current odds to win those tournaments and then get everyone ready for the big dance next week. So guys, let's begin with the big 10 currently projected to have eight bids to the tournament. Uh, of course, the odds coming in are courtesy of superbook.com and the Superbook app. The short favorite in the big 10 guys is Purdue coming in at plus 175. And then the number one seed in that conference, Illinois, is number two at plus 275. Uh, guys, let's, uh, Jay, begin with you. Give us your take on really what seems to be kind of a wide-open Big Ten tournament. Well, I, I think the last game was a great indicator of how deep the Big Ten was. I mean, Wisconsin had a chance to win the title. And then they lose to the last place Cornhuskers, who have been playing pretty well. I don't think anybody wants to play Nebraska right now, but a very deep field. And as you mentioned, Illinois uh, has a top seed, but it's all I think it's all about Purdue. I, you know, Purdue has really had some bad luck. They've lost a lot of close games. Mm -hmm. I think a, a few at the buzzer. But when it, when you talk about a deep conference, you know, this is it. Uh, yeah. th they're going to be well represented, like they always are. But uh, I think when it's all said and done, Purdue, uh, they look like the best team to me. If you take out a, just a couple of those losses, you know, they'd probably be right, right, right up there in one of the top four seats. So, um, but that's the how the madness works. The yeah. madness starts well before March, uh, <laughs> especially uh, the last uh, few games of the conference play. And that Nebraska upset over Wisconsin, by the way, that was in Wisconsin. Yeah, and, and so uh, the Big Ten is deep as usual, so it should be very interesting. Uh, and that in. knocked Wisconsin to the number two seed. They come in at a plus one thousand uh, for this tournament. Uh, John, give us your take on the Big Ten. Well, we actually saw some sharp money come in on Purdue this morning. Uh, plus one seventy five was correct up until just in the last thirty minutes. We're now mm. plus one fifty. On Purdue, we had a sharp player in the Superbook in Colorado, took the Boilermakers to win the tournament. I understand why. I watched that game against Wisconsin, uh, I think it was last week, when I believe Wisconsin banked in two three-pointers to win that game in the last minute. Uh, Jay mentioned it. Purdue's had some really rotten luck. They are the best team in this conference. Now, will they go out and execute in the conference tournament? That's a, that's a different question. But I do think they're priced correctly at plus 150. I do believe they're the best team. But sometimes the, the motivation's not there – in the conference tournaments the way it is the following week. Because right. really, at the end of the day, for a team like Purdue or Illinois, they don't need to win these games. Of course, they want to. But it's not like the small conference tournaments where it's win and you're in, and you're in lose sure. and you're out. If Purdue yeah. loses in the quarterfinals on Friday, they're still going to the big dance. That's a great point. So make sure you get to superbook.com and check out those odds. Just as John said, we have odds that have been changing up to the minute here. Uh, Purdue is plus 150 now, Illinois plus 350. 
Uh, and some in Wisconsin staying steady at plus 1,000 for the Big Ten tournament. All right, guys, let's move on to the Big 12 now, uh, currently projected to have six bids. As we look at the short favorite coming in here, it's actually the number one and number two seed. Uh, Kansas and Baylor both right now sit at plus 200. The number three seed, Texas Tech, plus 300. And number four, Texas comes in at plus 650. Murray will give you the opening odds. You know, really, mm -hmm. the defending national champion, Baylor Bears, looking to repeat. But uh, it looks like it's going to be a big battle between them and Kansas. Well, Baylor's just storming into this tournament. You know, they they won at home against Kansas two Saturdays ago. They followed that up with a great win on the road against a really solid Texas team. It's a team that lost, I think, four starters from last year's national championship season, still playing like one of the best in the country. I said that the conference tournaments don't have a ton of meaning for teams like this. I don't know if that's true in this case because Baylor and Kansas are both playing for a one seed. So yeah, they will be – a team like Baylor, if they go and they win this tournament, they're going to be one of the four one seeds for sure. So I, I do think it does have a little bit of extra meaning for Baylor. Kansas has been one of the best teams in the country all year. Of course, they almost always are. We saw some sharp money on Texas Tech. They took Texas Tech plus 350, knocked us down to three to one. So some really good teams at the top of the Big 12. And then you have my alma mater, West Virginia, in the play-in game. <laughs> so, but it's a tough, tough conference at the top. Because you've got three – I think there's three teams there that could yeah. realistically make the Final Four. Yeah, you know, I that's my sleeper team in this conference. Texas Tech, 23-8, and eight, finished third in the conference. Uh, you know, wins over Tennessee, beat Baylor twice – one win over Kansas and the other loss was in double overtime. So that's a team I'm going to keep an eye on. How about you, Jay? What your thoughts on the Big 12? Well, I, I, I just love Baylor. You know, I, I know they're the defending champions, which puts a big target on their back. And, you know, that's always a, for me when you handicap someone like that or a team like that. And just, you know, do they have the so same type of energy level they did last year being the defending champions? That's always going to be uh, difficult to match. But I mean, we're all talking about the top teams, but I, you got to look at this team down at the bottom, you know, Kansas state, you know, they, they beat, mm. I think uh, what Texas, uh, I think they beat Texas and Texas tech uh, just a, about a month ago. Right. And, They've been on the short end of a lot of games, but they're right there. So that's that's kind of a little sleeper. Now it's highly unlikely because they're sixty to one to win it, the the Big Twelve. But right. uh, I'm sure, it's going to come down to Baylor and Kansas. But watch out for the the Wildcats. That you know they have a chance to make some noise in this tournament. Great insight, Jay. We appreciate it as we are gearing up for the NCAA conference tournament. Uh, Starting this week, exciting times if you're a basketball fan, for sure. Let's now, fellas, move to the big bad SEC. They are projected to have uh, six bids to the big dance. And, of course, our current odds of this recording coming in from Superbook.com and the Superbook app. Uh, Kentucky is the short favorite. They are at plus 180 despite being the third seed in that tournament. Auburn, the number one, comes in at plus 260, and Tennessee, number two, at plus 350. I mean, Jake, really, it's a given, I think, the top six from the SEC will be dancing next week, but give us your take on the SEC tournament. Well, you mentioned the, the two big dogs up there, you know, Kentucky, uh, Auburn. They look uh, – Fantastic. And then Tennessee, uh, I've talked to a few guys over the last couple of weeks and they really like this Tennessee team. Tennessee team is playing right at, at uh, I was great at, at this moment. And of course, Arkansas has been very consistent in, in, in coming on as, as of late. But you look at the top four, maybe the top six, and then there's a big, huge gap after that. I mean, once you get beyond Alabama, it's really not that impressive. But those top six teams, Alabama and above, which includes LSU, Arkansas, uh, along with the top three, I think that's what it's going to come down to, Ron. I, I don't see any of the – I always look – if you have no, have noticed, I'm always looking for some of these longer shots to sure. come through, but I don't see one in the SEC. 
And John, what about you? Any sleepers possibly making some noise in the SEC, in your opinion? Well, you know, Arkansas, the team has been playing very well lately. We've got them at eight to one. They're a team that ran to the Elite Eight last season. They lost to right. Baylor. No shame in that. Baylor, that was a good game, that Baylor Arkansas uh, regional final. Baylor then went out and just crushed Houston and Gonzaga in the Final Four. Really made Arkansas's performance look even better. I like Eric Musselman a lot. I don't know. But, again, I would go back to where's their motivation level for the SEC tournament. Right. It's, it's just hard to peg that. Kentucky's the favorite, deservedly so. I do think Auburn's a team that's been a little overrated all season. I agree with what Jay said about Tennessee. I like them. LSU, Alabama, well-coached teams. I don't know if they're going to have the firepower in this tournament, though. The SEC has gotten a lot better in basketball. You're seeing a lot of those SEC programs are known for football, devoting more resources to basketball. Mm. And you're seeing coaches flock to the SEC. You, know, you, you even go further down the board, Buzz Williams at Texas A&M. We'll see if he can get that program going. They're, they're finally investing a lot of money in college basketball in the SEC. and That's a pretty tough tournament. It's usually the Kentucky Invitational. <laughs> and it's all Kentucky fans, and they breeze through, and yeah. they win the tournament. I don't know that that's going to be the case, not for the next few years, because there's a, some pretty solid basketball programs right now in the SEC. I think Kentucky's become a football school, but we'll save that for another <laughs> time, guys. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> hey, uh, keep it to Superbook.com and, and get to the Superbook app. Make sure you sign up at Superbook.com uh, today and get ready for the big tournament coming up. Uh, we will have some major promotions and odds boosts coming up related to college basketball uh, in the up and coming weeks. And as always, if you're in the area for the madness, stop by the Lodge Casino in Blackhawk, Colorado and the Superbook. Also at the Westgate in Las Vegas to watch all the big uh, big conference games and get you ready for the big dance. Follow us on social media at Superbook Sports. And if you're listening, please write a quick review and support us with a five-star rating. We've got the five-star odds makers with us today, Jay Cornegay and John Murray. Guys, let's now move on as we uh, predict and talk about these conference uh, championships. We'll move to the ACC now and that conference is projected to have five bids. And really, in this one, it's all Duke. To talk about the, the Kentucky Invitational, it seems like uh, everyone's on Duke in this one. They're the number one seed, of course. They come in at minus 140, the odds to win this conference tournament. And the next closest is number three, North Carolina at plus 700, Virginia Tech plus 900. But um, we'll go over to you, John, for this one. It, it looks like uh, the big time favorite is Duke and uh, mm -hmm. maybe they'll be motivated because of losing that tough game to arch rival uh, North Carolina that ruined Coach K's final home game. I saw a headline, I think, on ESPN this morning or the day before. Did, did the result of the game ruin K Coach K's final home game? Well, of course it did. They lost the game. What kind of a headline? Yes, it ruined the Coach K's final home game. They lost to North Carolina as a 12-point favorite. That was a stunning loss. Uh, really, I never even considered that as a possibility. It ruined a lot of parlays. I yes, it did. Uh, Duke, a minus-140 favorite, as you mentioned. We closed the betting on this one for the time being. We do have first-round action going on right now in the ACC tournament. North Carolina, plus, plus 575, the second favorite. Saw a sharp guy take Virginia Tech at plus Ooh. eight and a quarter. Virginia Tech's a, a, probably a team that people don't realize how good they are, but that'd be a lot to ask them to go out and win this tournament. Uh, Duke, of course, is the favorite, but I think they've given away their chance at a one seed. I think they would have had a chance at a one seed if they beat North Carolina and then they won this tournament. I think Duke's going to find itself on the two line now. I do expect them to get, we'll call it a favorable draw in Coach K's final season but I yes. don't think the Blue Devils are going to get a one seed. Well, they, we will see how that plays out. I mean, for me, kind of standing out with these odds, Jay, is uh, the number two seed in the ACC, Notre Dame, at plus 1,000. I mean, any chance that the Fighting Irish could make some waves? I, I don't think so, Ron. <laughs> I'm looking at this, and there's a, a big gap between 
Duke and the rest of the field here. I just yeah. don't see that happening. I, I'm looking at the action and North Carolina, as John said, they're plus 575, but we get a we got a lot of action on them. There's a yeah. lot of interest in North Carolina. A lot of right tickets now. on North Carolina. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And and so uh there there are some believers out there that that win on the road uh against Duke uh was just no fluke. But I mean looking at the projections. And this is really surprising looking at the AFC or excuse me, ACC is that uh, Duke is the uh, only single digit or projected single digit seed in the main tournament. All the rest are either a 10th seed or higher. And that's that's really that's really surprising to me. Now, I think that could change if let's just say North Carolina or Virginia Tech or someone like that or even Notre Dame wins this tournament. But I find that very doubtful, especially the way Duke played in uh, Coach K's final home game, I think they're going to be highly motivated to win this tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think so, too. And and that's what's kind of cool about the conference tournament, too. You get some of these rematches and you get some bad blood and you get some very cool storylines as well. All right. Let's go to a conference that's near and dear to my heart. The Pac-12 currently projected to have three bids. Three bids, man, the conference is down this year, hoping uh, that fourth team might be able to slide in there. But the short favorite, I mean, it looks like this is all going to be Arizona. They are the number one seed and current odds, according to Superbook.com and the Superbook app. Uh, Arizona is a minus 160 to win the conference. Number two seed, uh, UCLA, some money coming in on them. They were at plus 260. They're down to plus 250. And then on the opposite side, USC, uh, they've been struggling lately. They were at plus 800. They're down to uh, plus 900. Um, My CU Buffs, the number four seed, plus 3,000, guys. Come on. Really? I'll take that. No, I won't. <laughs> it's a tough, tough road for CU, uh, Ron. You know, they got a – I don't know what's happened to Oregon. Dana Altman's Ducks, I, I thought they yeah. were very solidly into the tournament uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. All of a sudden, the wheels have completely come off for Oregon. Now they're probably going to need to win this tournament. But Colorado's got to go right away. they got to play Oregon in the first game. If they win that game – Almost certainly would think on Friday night they'll play Arizona in the semifinals, and then either UCLA or USC in the title game is very likely. So that's Tough why enough. you see them at 30-1. to 1. I know they had that great win at home against Arizona a few weeks back, and, and right. they're a solid team, but it's a really tough path when you got to play Oregon in the first game. Yeah, for sure. And the, the you know, USCJ, uh, as I mentioned, you know, they were getting a lot of shine uh, a few weeks ago, and then things have really taken a turn for them at plus 900 now. Give us your thoughts on the Pac-12. Well, sorry about those uh, buffs there, but, uh, <laughs> you know, anything can happen in this tournament. I mean, last year, I, I thought it, I thought that was a great run. I, I You know, they kind of stole my heart last year when, when the Beavers – ran through this tournament, right? right? And then went mm-hmm. all the way to the Elite Eight and almost won mm-hmm. that. That was yeah. just an incredible run. I really enjoyed it. And, and someone like CU could actually do it, right? They they have the tools. They have been playing very well of late. I think they've won seven of eight. I mean, eight. versus yeah, like Oregon. Oregon's lost five of six. So mm-hmm. those two teams are going in different directions and they're facing up in the first round. So um, anything can happen. But when it comes down to it, I've seen Arizona play in person a couple of times this year and they are a beast. Yeah, they yeah. they have everything. They have everything to win this thing, not just the Pac-12, but, every, you know, the whole thing. And, uh, you know, they got the size, they got the guard play, they got shooters. They obviously – you know, I think the, the coaching job has been surprisingly really good there, uh, but that's definitely a team that's going to contend for the title. I'm just looking at the bets come in, Rob, and there's a lot of interest in UCLA. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it. you yeah. got a couple of tickets on uh, the, the CU buffs and, and a couple others uh, scattered throughout USC and Oregon, Washington State, but most of the interest so far have been on the Bruins. Okay, great insight up to the minute odds movements. That's what this podcast is all about. And uh, I appreciate uh, the kind words about my buffs. So you're saying there's a chance. Uh, 
Man, don't tease me like that, Jay. Don't tease me. All right, that's the Pac-12. Uh, Guys, um, and we got to give a shout out to our, our friends down in Arizona. The Superbook Sports app is now live in Arizona. You think your Wildcats are going to go on a run? Make sure you download the app and sign up today and get in on the action. All right, quickly, I'd like to just look at a couple other conferences, guys, uh, beginning with the Mountain West, uh, true and close to Jay's heart and his CSU Rams. Currently, they're looking at uh, four bids from the Mountain West, uh, Boise State and San Diego State, both plus 275 your uh csu rams number two c at plus 375 and Kristen mackey's wyoming cowboys man they're struggling getting into uh this coming into this tournament they are at plus 700 jay give us your take on the mountain west tournament well speaking of k mac and her cowboys i just looked at we have two tickets on the cowboys two tickets yeah. For twenty three dollars, a total both so from I'm, her, I, right? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's. K- I don't think Kristen's allowed to bet here, Jay. It so is, we might have to. Of course not. Co- we might have to launch a gaming investigation. Oh yeah, that's a, a Calvin true. Ridley yeah. style not investigation. Calvin there Ridley, yes, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, breaking news. Um, but uh, no, this is going to be a great tournament. The, the Mountain West mm-hmm. has had, had a terrific year. Uh, I Boise's the number one seed, but that you know two third. The two, three, and the four seed, which is uh, Colorado State, San Diego State, and Wyoming. Um, you know, anybody can win it from, from you know, the top five or six. I mean, UNLV has been playing very well over the second half of the season. They're eight to one to win the, the Mountain West title, and nobody wants to play them at, at this time. Good so point. I, I think it's going to be a, a three team uh, bid uh, league. I, I don't think if, if somebody loses in the quarterfinals, either San Diego state or maybe even uh, Wyoming. If one of those teams lose uh, in the quarterfinals, there's a good chance they might miss out. But I think it's safe to say that three of the top teams are going to make it through and be able to get a a three bid uh, league out of the mountain West. So very interesting uh, to follow all season long, great balance, but it's going to come down to the last four or top four teams. Very good. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. The Mountain West tournament uh, is always a good time. Uh, John, let's go over to the Big East. You know, Mm -hmm. it seems that they are suddenly back. They're predicted to have seven bids coming into the tournament. Uh, The favorite in in the Big East tournament, Villanova plus 150. Number three, UConn plus 350. And this kind of uh, got my attention. You got Providence, the number one seed in that tournament at plus 650 man that seems there's a lot of value on providence well don't don't get too caught up in the seeds because uh what that's telling you is that we think providence would be an underdog against villanova or connecticut if they do meet up head to head this weekend so don't don't or next weekend i should say don't put too much stock in the seeds but villanova they've been the class of the conference all year uconn hasn't been far behind them uconn's had a great season under under coach hurley it's great having connecticut back in the big east i've been a big east fan my whole life it wasn't a real Big East tournament without Connecticut and Syracuse. It pains me to say that as I root against them always, but it's, it won't really be the Big East until Syracuse comes back. But it is good to have Connecticut in there. Should be fun this weekend, although I don't think my Georgetown Hoyas are going to go on a similar run. They had that run last year where they actually won this tournament and got into the NCAAs, lost to your buffs in the first round. That yeah, is right. not going to happen in 2022. The Hoyas went 0-18 in the Big East this season, and nobody is even taking a shot on them at 500 to 1. Oh, Most of wow. the bets are coming in on Providence. Yeah. Well, uh, great insight, guys, as we covered uh, the Power Five and then took a look at some of the other conferences. The tournaments are tipping off this week. You know, all teams fighting to secure those elusive conference tournament winner automatic bids to the big dance uh you know just a lot of fun this week some some rematches and some longtime rivalries they run it back which is always fun as we wrap up guys i just wanted to get a quick take as we look ahead to the ncaa tournament you know a lot can happen going into selection sunday but is there a team or two you guys like to make a run and maybe have good value if people are making a wager at Superbook.com? Jay, we'll start with you. 
Well, as I mentioned about the SEC, a lot of a lot of people talking about uh, Tennessee. They're playing really well, and and they certainly have the horses to to, to make a, a run and even possibly capture the, the the crown. As you mentioned at the top of the show, there's it, it's a deep field. You're talking maybe uh, 15 or 16 teams could win this title. Uh, but if you're looking at a couple of longer shots, you know, possibly Tennessee. I know some people have talked about Memphis. Memphis is playing very well. I don't yeah. think anybody wants to play them. Now, to get over some of the bigger hurdles is, is going to be a huge challenge. But if you're looking at some longer shots, taking Memphis at 51 isn't, you know, that bad of idea. I love it. And John will uh, give you the final word. I think Jay, Jay stole my thunder a little bit. I made a bet on Memphis. Over, uh, <laughs> I think on Sunday I saw them just demolish Houston. Yeah, and that, that team is playing great right now. I don't know if they can really win the national championship, but they are a team with long odds that, like Jay said, nobody wants to play. Baylor, we got them at 14-1. to 1. That, might not, that might not be a bad bet if they do secure one of the one seeds. Gonzaga, Arizona, they're the they're presumptive favorites, of course. They'll both be one seeds. Kentucky is very dangerous if they're healthy. But we have them at 8-1, to 1, so I, I don't know how much value you're really getting there. Baylor, 14-1 to 1 might be the, the one I would look at, but – it's tough to go back to back. It's been a long time since the same school won the national championship back to back seasons. I think Florida in 06 yeah. and 07. And that was an historically great college basketball team. I don't know that Baylor is quite at that level, but they are scary. And I do believe the Big 12 is the best conference in the country. They will they are battle tested. And we saw last year how how battle tested they were going into the NCAAs. They went through that tournament like a buzzsaw. Gonzaga had had a pretty easy schedule going into that tournament. They weren't ready for what Baylor threw at them in the championship yeah. game. Baylor's yeah. getting healthy too, just at the yeah. right time. So they're going to get a couple of shooters back in, and yeah. that's certainly going to help them. But you're right. I mean, Baylor just looks so big to me. I mean, it's just about the target being on their back and just the motivational and energy level that they're going to have to, you know, uh, produce to repeat. And Jay, let, let's see the draw that Duke gets on Sunday <laughs> afternoon. I know I made that joke earlier in the show, but I'm not. I'm not totally joking. Yeah, I really no, do. I, I really it. do expect the Blue Devils to be favorably positioned oh. to make a run to a final, final four for Coach K. I do think that's going to happen. You mean like Greensboro? Uh, mm. I think it's going to be. I think you're going to look at their draw and say, "Oh, that looks pretty good." Can you bet on where the draw? And no, I'll just kidding. All right, guys, great job as always. Uh, we are excited as uh, we will see which bubble teams go on a run. You know which teams bubbles burst and which Cinderella's will emerge ahead of Selection Sunday. It's really a basketball fan's dream time of year. And next week, we will do it again. We will preview the NCAA tournament from Vegas. That's correct. At the Westgate in the Superbook. Guys, grab me a sleeping bag. Make me some room in the office because I'm coming to Vegas and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out with you guys for the show. Looking forward to it. Any final thoughts? No, I'm just ready to get going, man. Ready to get going, Jay. I can't. I, so we haven't had a real NCAA That's tournament insane. in three years, Ron. We didn't. Last year didn't count. Good point. Last year we had a goofy schedule. We had 50% occupancy in the book due to COVID. And 2020 obviously got canceled entirely. So this is our first full-on, full speed ahead March Madness in three years, and I know we're very excited. There you go. A lot of bacon, double cheeseburgers, and light beer next week. <laughs> Chorus light. Get it stocked in that mini fridge. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. Uh, great job. We'll see you uh, next week. Thanks, Ron. You bet. That's going to do it for this edition of the Superbook Sports Podcast. Keep checking the Superbook app in the coming weeks for some major promotions and odds boosts related to college basketball. Uh, for the entire Superbook Sports staff and our producer, Jeremiah Crow my co-host, Jay Cornegay, and John Murray. I'm Ron Kruk. Enjoy the games, everyone.